guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today drained me. This episode done drained me, guys. We're going to have to have a, a big conversation in the comment section because so much was going on. I know I didn't pick up on everything. I just know I didn't. I just know I didn't because, guys, there was so much was going on. And my sister said I could, it could be as long as I needed it to me, guys. So, guys, <laughs> we're definitely doing over 20 minutes. But, guys, before I get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You already know we're to 30K. Alrighty, guys, the episode starts off with who? Lola Pucking who? Ruben. Like, so typical, so basic, so boring. That did not need to be a cliffhanger, like I said. Like, it was giving you, oh, no. It was definitely very much so giving yawn. And, um... Yeah, I just think the whole thing was uh, BS and Joey was saying to Jesse that he feels like, he was like, oh, you see, I told you, trust me, believe me, believe me, like, I knew this was going to happen, like, you had no reason to doubt me, like, next time you have to trust me. Joey gaslights for free, guys, for free. I've Honestly, that man actually kind of scares me and it's actually quite annoying how, like, annoying he is. That man really, really scares me because the, the way he just lies unnecessarily is crazy, like, he just lies unnecessarily. The reason why Lola didn't pick you is because you didn't make it. It's like you were going around making it seem like she was a liar. So, of course, why would she pick you if you wasn't giving her the energy that you were giving her early on in the day? So, when Joey and Jesse end up having, like, a proper conversation, he was definitely um, gaslighting her. And it was really, really, really annoying that that was happening. And he was like, oh, yeah, like, Lola and I, we just have, like, a lot of things in common. We have, like, a lot of things in common. Um, and we were just chatting. It was just friendly. I never gave her any energy. Da, 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 da. And honestly, just plainly waffling. So that's why, me personally, I can't wait for the grafties to come because um, him flirting with Lola was, yeah, there. And I definitely voted for that one. That's the one I, def I definitely voted for that one. So, yeah. And then... I think Jessie needs... I don't even understand how Jessie and Joey are together, but Jessie, of course, thankfully, is using her own brain cells. I was worried for a reason. I was worried for a reason. You did not shut it down. And her feelings are 100% valid. And for him to try and make it seem like she made things up in her head and then she's manifesting Lola liking Joey, that's BS. That's objectively bs and she said that you should make it clear like that you should make it clear and then he was saying well well we haven't had that conversation we haven't had that conversation with uh lolly you made it clear yeah with lolly you made it clear you shut it down but with lola you don't want to shut it down you're making it seem like as if um you know what i mean oh, it, you know what I mean, it's above me and stuff like that, oh, I, I did this, you didn't do any of that, I'm gonna say, I think it's so annoying what he's doing, and Joey needs to go where? In the bin. Now, just as an FYI, guys, if you're a Joey fan or a Sean fan, you might wanna log off now, because the amount of times they're gonna go into the bin, oh yeah, guys, we're about to, we're about to start dragging people, okay, okay. Anyways, Grace and Harry are having a conversation, and Grace is so not interested, it's quite hard to see and watch it, and now that like, she's so not interested to the point where she's even mentioning like, how her and Ruben had a good thing, mind you, she was saying about Ruben just a couple days ago, that I'm still open, I'm still open, so this is what happens when you say you're still open, sometimes an option that's worse off than the option you already have, will come in and pick you, and I think that's definitely what's happened there, because it's surprising that she's now boasting about how good her and Ruben was or were just before Harry picked her. Now Ruben and Lola are having a conversation and he was saying that like, they're very similar, they come from similar places. It's funny that he said they're similar ages because Joey's 33 years old. Even though he acts like he's 12, he is 33 years old. Lola is 22 years old. Ruben is 23 years old. He don't even have no business speaking to her anyways because what do you have to talk? Like an 11 year difference is crazy. Now, of course, like, what's about, like, 50-year-olds is not crazy. But 33 and 22, in my opinion, that's crazy. She just, she could still, she could just be wrapping up her uni degree right now. Because I was definitely still, in, I did a four-year course. I was still in uni. No, I got a young birthday, so I wasn't. But it was, if you did a four-year course and you were born in October, oh, you would have been 22 before you graduated. So it's just, like, it's not making any sense. It's, that, it's actually really crazy, but, um... Ruben has the same apprehensive uh, apprehension that Grace has. He was saying that, like, I just need a night to sleep on it. I need to kind of just see what's going on. Da, 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 da. So it definitely seems like he's not sure about Lola and Lola picking him. And um, he's not going to really progress anything tonight because he kind of just needs to sleep on it and see how he's feeling in the morning. 
So then we see Josh and Nicole have a conversation and they're discussing Josh calling her the most arrogant person in the challenge yesterday. And he's simply saying he based his decision off of Kieran and Nicole being in a really strong couple and of course being confident, if not so to maybe leaning towards arrogant about being in a relationship with each other. Now, let's even be honest, guys. Does that answer make sense? No, but it is what it is. Like, I really don't care. It is what it is. Now, Nicole decided to lie and say that she is level-headed. Ooh. And Nicole used to go, where? In the bin. I would never put, like, if you're talking about this Nicole being level-headed, yes, that is in, that's indeed a fact. That's indeed the truth. But that Nicole being level-headed, does she even know what the definition of level-headed is? Guys, when she said that, like, honestly, I could have really fell off my bed. I could have really rolled off my bed because it was that crazy that surely she wants to talk about herself. Like, surely. And then she started crying and doing the most. And I'm like, imagine someone having an opinion on you. I'm sorry, Josh's reasoning didn't even really make sense for real, but let's say that's his reasoning, yeah. It also doesn't even really make sense. Somebody had to get picked and it's moved you to the point where you're crying but you're level-headed. Someone that doesn't even know you guys is saying you're arrogant because you guys are in a relationship and that's, and you still deserve to be swayed by it. You still deserve to be, you still decide to be moved by it. It doesn't even make sense. Like Nicole, this is what I'm saying. You're not level-headed. The reasoning was BS, charge it. I'm not saying that them two are not arrogant. I'm just saying that Josh's reasoning didn't really make too much sense. Of course, he, he maybe he was trying to be PC with the answer because of course he already saw that Nicole was upset and then Nicole was doing the most like, oh, I'm so madly in love with Kieran. Like, girl, bye. I'm so madly in love with what? You know what I mean? And this is not even arrogant. This is her, this is when I was like, oh, someone wants to win so much. This is it. I'm so madly in love with him. Girl, bye. I don't know. Like, you ain't fooling nobody. You ain't fooling nobody. Honestly, just rest and, yeah, behave yourself. Then Ayo and Kieran have a similar conversation about Ayo saying that the islander that would do anything to win is Nicole. And he was like, oh, yeah, I really got upset. Like, then get upset, Kieran. If you want to get upset, get upset then. If you want to turn up, turn up then. I'm going to turn you back down. But if you want to turn up, turn up. If you feel like you want to be the big man, then turn up then. Because realistically speaking, it's not that much of a big deal. Like, first of all, again, people need to remember. Somebody needs to get picked, yeah? Nicole was the weakest link. Goodbye. And if it's still, wasn't he the same one yesterday saying that everybody wants to win? So if everybody wants to win, why is it a bad thing that I.O. saying your girl wants to win? You are okay with confessing that. And uh, not that it's not true, guys, because everybody wants to win. Everyone wants to be on the show long enough. Everybody wants to gain some sort of popularity, fame, endorsements, whatever it is, that's fine. We're in 2024, we know what the game is, it doesn't matter. But you are comfortable with admitting that for yourself yesterday, but now that I have seen maybe Nicole wants it a bit more than everybody else, you have a problem with that. You better put that problem in the bin and keep it pushing. Again, he gave his reasoning, it was simple, it was to the point, it's his opinion, there was no malice, let's move on. Grace and Harry are having a conversation, and why are these two arguing about the colour of her eyes? Um, I didn't really get it. Like, now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what um, eye colour Grace has. If I'm not mistaken, I thought like maybe two or three, maybe sorry, three or four percent of the population had green eyes. If I'm not mistaken, I could be lying. I'm not too sure. It get, Grace might want to seem more interesting saying that she has green eyes because nobody really has green I'm not I'm trying to think, do I know anyone that has green eyes? Not off the top of my head. But whether it's green or blue, who cares? Like, this is a, it's a really silly conversation. Especially, even if you're thinking that she's BS, she's BSing. Harry, how are you going to argue with a girl about the colour highs? Like, that's just a, it's just a, it's just a nonsense conversation. There's no point of getting into that. There's no, there's no point. Because she's thinking, like, you've known me five seconds. How are you going to tell me what my eyes colour is? So even if she's lying or not, unless it was like an obvious thingy, who cares? Okay, it's bluey green, it's orangey pink. Okay, we don't care. Joey and Lola end up having a conversation to clear things up. I don't think anything needs to really be cleared up. Joey's a liar. So um, unless you're going to clear up and say, I'm a liar, then there's actually nothing to clear up. Lola's better than me because she was willing to accept that, oh yeah, maybe it was friendly and maybe like I kind of in, in misinterpreted it. I'm not misinterpreted. Oh, that's not coming from, from, okay, let me, oh, let me bring it back now, y'all. Oh, one hop this time. All right. I'm not misinterpreting not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. He made it seem as if like she manifested it. She made things up. She exaggerated the situation. And that's just not the case. But, you know what I mean? She decided to. He was like, oh, yeah, it was super friendly. There was nothing for me to shut down because they nothing, they not, there was nothing there anyways. 
but you were definitely flirting. Y'all idiots were playing footsies right in front of Ruben while he was trying to talk to Shorty. And then to make it even worse, you were encouraging her the next morning to be ch to chatting to you, to be grafting you. You were loving her saying that she could get, basically get your attention and that she could turn your head. You were hopeful, waiting. You were, you know, let me see what she can do. Let me see if she can actually do it. So you were doing all of that. But now, because maybe Lola don't want to have an argument, I don't know. Again, maybe the eyelashes are confusing her brain. I don't know, guys. Anything could be happening. But she's not willing to stand up for herself in that moment. That's her business, because it really wasn't her fault, but that's her business. Anyway, they get a text, and they're doing the couple goals challenge. So good, another challenge to mix things up, to cause some drama. Come on, producers, y'all doing y'all's big one. Y'all is doing y'all's big one, because again, this is week seven, and y'all still giving us decent content. Right, big up yourselves. Anyways, I'm not going to name every single category or even name every, what everybody said because, God, I'm, I'm telling you, there was too much talk that was going on and not everything was relevant and then I can only write so fast. Sorry. So the first question was, which couple is the most argumentative? For me, there was only one right answer. So to be hearing any ans any other answers other than Nicole and Kieran, I think, was BS. It was a pop-out. It was foolishness. I don't care if Jesse and Joey, Matilda and Sean and... I'm gonna put I on Jesse, Jesse, um, Jessica to the side quickly. They didn't argue, they don't argue as much as Nicole and Kieran. Like, Kieran will do the smallest thing and she's arguing and she's crying and she's up. The fact that anybody said anything other than Nicole and Kieran, other than Nicole and Kieran, of course, because they can't pick themselves, are liars, point blank, period. Now, I don't know why Sean forever has, if it's not Mimi, it's Josh. If it's not Josh, it's Ayo. And if it's not Ayo, it's Jessica's name, always consistently in his tiny beef suckers. Yeah? Always in his mouth has he got these people's names. I don't know what the obsession is, and it's getting scary. He decided that he wanted to put Jessica and Ayo in the most argumentative. I'm still trying to wait to figure out when they argued. Now, they'll have conversations, but they're not arguing. We don't hear raised voices. We don't hear people crying. We don't hear, people, like, we don't hear none of that. So, most argumentative. And Sean's reasoning um, was that I don't know, Sean's, I can't even remember what Sean's reasoning was. Sean's reasoning was something stupid like, oh, there was some friction when it came to the whole Mimi situation. They did not argue. They did not argue. So you're putting their name down for a while because you are, honestly, you've got a hard on for them and you just keep on revisiting the situation. I'm sorry, these men, them are better than me because I'm not going to lie, I would have sparked him by now. Respectfully, disrespectfully, I don't, like, he would auction, like, honestly, he would be getting on my last nerve. Now at this point, you're just going to have to square up. Squ like, put up or shut up. Those will be your only two options with me, guys. I'm not even, because the way Sean is just so persistent with it, now I know, like honestly, Omar, if you're watching this video, I owe you an apology. Because you giving him Croydon, he's lucky you didn't put hands on him. Thankfully, you're, you're smarter than that. But I understand why you batted him up, because he's a little weasel. You sussed him out for exactly who he was. And I was like, no, he's not like that. Look at me, dumb babe. Went to go buy this idiot sweets, yeah? When you already sussed him out, you already sussed him out. I was like, oh, Emma, why are you do? Why are you bringing Croydon? Oh, I'ma bring. I'ma really bring my area to him. Honestly, he could not be playing with me like this. He could not be. I'm not even gonna lie, guys. I'm not. I would not be taking Sean lying down. And Sean needs to go where in the bin because he just keeps on bringing it up. And I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to put a stop to it. Now, whatever method I choose, whatever method I choose. But I'm going to have to put a stop to it, period. Because I'm not no chicken head. You ain't going to be playing with me. I'm not no fool. I'm going to let you know you're the fool. You're the meek. You're the dweeb. You can't sit with me. And you definitely can't speak to me. What? Crazy. Anyways, um, so yeah, that was BS. Um, and I'm not going to lie for me. Jessica ate in this episode. Now, she's been eating in a couple episodes, but she definitely ate in this episode. She said, what did she say? She said, Sean wears Joey's asshole as a hat. Jessica, say it again for the, in the back. Say it for the, in the back. I wish you would have said it in front of everyone. He would have been so embarrassed. He would have been so embarrassed. He would have went red and so embarrassed, yeah? Because you are, like, imagine being a bum suck to an idiot. Do you know how that, that means you, that means you're an idiot times two. Because how is it, how are you gonna follow an idiot? That means you're an idiot already, that you think the idiot is smart enough for me to be following. 
You're a clown. Honestly, Sean irritates my whole spirit. Honestly, I really don't. I really dislike this character of his. I really do. I really, 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 really do. Because it's actually not every day. Let you rest and let me rest. Yeah? Let us all collectively rest. Okay? Moving on. The next one. Biggest ick. Again, or cool, not again, Kieran and Nicole ended up picking Jessica and Ayo because he was like, oh, seeing them in Castro and more made me sick. Kieran, are you jealous? What, what was so sickening about it? Because I don't recall them doing anything that was nasty. So what did he mean it made you sick? Like, say something that makes sense instead of just talking ish. Like, I feel like that was just a, bull, a BS, let me not swear. That, that was such a BS answer. Seeing you in Castro made me sick. Seeing Nicole's makeup sometimes makes me sick, but I didn't say anything. I just said that just now. I only would have usually kept my opinions to myself. But since we're talking, since we're talking, since we're talking, you and Nicole's toxic tray or kink thing that you guys like to insult each other with, oh, you, she, you like to be insulted by her and you like to be made up with. I think that's an ick, but who am I to talk? I don't really know too much. Anyways, Harry and Grace got a lot of votes, and but Ruben really, I don't, you see, Ru Ruben is too, I'm not going to lie, like, I thought Ruben and Josh had a good friendship, but Ruben is quite the messy guy. He's quite the messy guy. He picked Grace and Harry and said that, oh, they don't have a lot of chemistry. They're just standing there like lamppost. Big up Grace for standing up for herself because really, Ruben thought he ate with that one. Like, he really, really thought he ate with that one. And Ruben needs to go, where? In the bin. Because that was embarrassing for him, honestly. It really was because he really thought he was going to devour with that one. And he wasn't even thinking it through because don't you still want to get with Grace and your hair trying to bat her up? But anyways, she was like, um, I don't feel the need to have to be all over him while we're playing a game. I don't feel like I have the need, and the need to put my hand on him just because we're standing next to each other. And Ruben was doing that to what? Let... Lola know that he's there. Like we ready. Like we can see you. <laughs> we can see you, and you're gonna overcompensate because you're trying to make it seem like you like Lola. You don't like Lola. You like Grace. So it's just stupid that he did that. And then who said it? I think Jesse said something like, um, um, uh, "Would you want them to be more touchy feely?" And he was like, "No." So he deeped that I actually like Grace. If they be more touchy feely, she might not be an option um, for me. So then Grace was like, "So then shut the f up." And I was like, Grace, swallow him. Devour him. Because you thought you were trying to be cute. You're trying to, you want to say, you want to say kiki, you want to kaka. But she ended up laughing last because she embarrassed you. You look dumb. How can you that be someone that you want to pursue? And then you're there trying to be like, oh, she's not all over the guy. Do you want her to give him sloppy top in front of you? Like, what is, what's, what's, on, what's, wrong, what's wrong with you? You're not smart. Anyways, um, Aya and Jessica picked Sean and Matilda, and then um, Aya was like, it's because Sean, you're jarring. Oh, what's jarring? You, like, you're, you're not, he's, he thinks he's endearing. He's, he's just a little schmuck. He's not endearing at all. Oh, what's jarring? What's jarring? Like, oh, you're not even partial. What do you mean, wait, what's jarring? You know you know what jarring is. But anyways, what's jarring? And of course, Aya was like, annoying. You. <laughs> like, of course you're jarring. Like, not only is your face jarring, your voice is jarring. Like, your personality, everything about you is jarring. I think there isn't a better word to explain it. And then he tries to be like, oh, yeah. Um, well, I was mentioning the whole Mimi thing because Jessica didn't know. And then Jessica was like, you know, you wasn't trying to help me, baby. You wasn't trying to do me no favor. So please, please, please stop it where you're at. I know that's the one thing about Jessica. She gonna stand up for herself. And I love that for her. She ain't gonna let people take her for idiot. She gonna stand up for herself. Um, and yeah. Sean is out and out just a busybody, and I'm tired of him. Dead ass, I only need to show him Canning Town. Now, what do I know about Canning Town? I don't know. But I know it's East London. Bring out sound for him because Sean is playing with y'all for no reason. Like, for absolutely no reason. You just consistently are talking, and it's getting on everybody's nerves. Then he, then Sean was like, well... Mimi told me around the fire pit that she still liked you just a couple days ago. Now, and then you ain't still Jessica, Jessica again. Why are you even drawing her out? Why are you exposing her for that? Like, again, now you now you trying to make it seem like you're backing up Mimi and you have her back, but you're drawing her out. She's having private conversations with you and you're drawing her out. So, Sean, you just want to be involved. You're too messy. You're just obsessive. And, like, it's almost like he's trying to be this season's Mitch. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even, I even hate to even say this about Mitch, but Mitch was even a bit more endearing than this. Like, Sean is just, uh, like, brother, uh, across the board. And Sean needs to go, where? 
in the bin. Like he's not like there, there, there's not really much to him. I don't want to even start really getting personal, but there's nothing even about him. Like at least Mitch was funny. At least he had the humor. He had a little bit of something about him. What is this? Like Mitch, like some some could argue now. I don't know if he is, but some could argue like he was quite iconic in that season. Sean, you're not, you're gonna be forgotten about. You're gonna be forgotten. You're gonna be the Candy Man. Like nobody wants to be with a Candy Man. Scary, actually scary. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad that Sean, not Sean. I was glad that Jessica was just standing on big, big business. And I'm not gonna lie, like guys, I don't want to be this person, but I'm not gonna lie. I thought it yesterday, and I decided not to say it. And I thought it again today, and I told my sisters, and it was just kind of was what it was. Now I'm not saying Sean is. But I'm not gonna lie, guys. I am quite, quite, quite concerned that why is it every person he's coming from are like this? I'm not saying he's anything, so don't come try to jump down my throat. But I'm saying, why is he only ever talking to people like like this? I'm not. I'm not getting it, guys. I'm not gonna lie. It could be. Or it, it could just be. It could just happen to be the case. But I would be stupid and blind not to realize that something, something stinks. Something is stinking. And then Matilda was showing that side of her that was in Casa. She was like, oh, well, so can we move on now? Can we move on now? Can we just leave it? No, tell your minds to leave it. Because Aya, Josh, Mimi, Jessica, they all had to jump him, verbally jump him, because he was talking too much. So Matilda, if you're gonna try to tell anybody to leave it and to drop it and let's move on, let's let this be the last time we talk about it, talk to your man. Yeah? Talk to the idiot you sleep behind, yeah? Or you sleep with or whatever you guys are doing with each other. You're embarrassing yourself with him and then you're trying to defend him. It's just, it's just too embarrassing. And I'm not gonna lie, Matilda, she's lucky. I, like, I, I'm, I'm just happy I'm not in the villa because man would really have to speak to her on a level, yeah? Don't, don't talk to me about me leaving anything. Talk to your man. And if you got a problem, then pull up on me and then let's talk about it. One on one, let's talk about it because you're too you're you're too mouthy and then you're wrong as well on top of it. It's annoying. Talk to your man, yeah. Imagine you're with a man that talks more than girls do. That man talk more than I do, and I have a YouTube channel for talking, guys. That's crazy. That is crazy. Moving on. Most smug people were choosing Jesse and Joey, um, and then. Because he keeps on going around the villa saying that they have such an amazing relationship. Some people were picking Nicole and Kieran. And I believe Josh and Mimi picked Sean. And then Sean took offence to it. Again, maybe you can take offence to it because you can't be smug. If you if anything makes sense, Matilda don't like you, you know that. You should know that so that you actually have no reason to be smug. And he was like, oh, smug is a rude word, but you're happy to call somebody else smug. It's a game. Charge it. Moving on, the next one was least honest, um, the couple with the least honest um, feelings. Mimi and uh, uh, Mimi and Josh were picked by lots of people, citing that Mimi still likes Ayo and that uh, Grace, uh, that Josh fancies Grace. And I think Grace, Josh is valid in saying that if I wanted Grace, why would I not go for Grace? Grace was the easier option. Grace was very, very available. Mimi got baggage, 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 baggage. So he was like, I'm categorically saying in front of everybody, I do not have any feelings, he said, for the girl, lard, but he meant for Grace. Um, so there's no reason for you to be, even be saying anything. And here comes Joey saying, jumping in, being like, oh, Mimi, Mimi, you, you, well, you said something, you said something. So he's now alluding to something happening. Okay, cool. Then um, Ruben and Lola, they picked Joey and Grace. They picked Joey and they can't pick Joey and Grace. They post Joey and um, Jesse, I believe. Um, and then I think, I can't even remember who Matilda and Sean picked. I think they picked Lola and Ruben. And then Lola was like, oh, I don't agree. And Matilda was basically like, I said what I said, let's move on. That nasty attitude. Again, that's that same thing that she was doing with Diamante. Diamante, we need you back, man, because you can check this little bubble here. Like, she's so annoying, honestly. She gets on my nerves sometimes. Like, you're actually not big and bad. Um, the next one is game players joey and lola were picked joey and jesse were picked maybe mainly joey and jesse because the people are saying he knows the game um you know what i mean he's been on tv for ages like he knows what he's doing he's he's an attack he's he likes antagonizing people and those things are all valid and then all of a sudden here joey and jesse i think they pick harry and um grace and i think he says it's because that's not grace's type or something like that and it's like 
first of all, one, why are you concerned about Gracie's type again? Like, why are you concerned about Gracie's type? He was like, oh, because when she was with me, she was really different, but now with him, she's 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 not the same, and I know what she, I know how she's like when she fancies somebody, and he's like, why are you still consistently reminiscing about your relationship or lack thereof with Grace? I don't understand why that's always on your mind. Like, he's always, you know what I mean, playing it back, playing it back, playing it back. You, it's always on your mind. Jesse, you should be bothered because he keeps on worried about the girl he used to be with and that he dumped in his head, in his own warped head. He dumped her, but he's always still talking about her. And Grace was like, but you know you're not my type, so what's the issue? Again, why do you have a problem that you're not, Joe, that you're not Grace's type? Another one. I'm not calling Joey anything. However, why are you bothered that her type um, is men? Why are, you, why are you bothered? Why are you bothered? Why are you bothered you're not melanated? I can't understand why you're, what, why is that a bother to you? Again, you're with Jesse. You have so much in common with her, so much. Your relationship is so deep. Face your forward. You're happy. If Grace is not happy, that's her business. That's her business. But you're always got your, her name in your beef suckers. And Joey needs to go where? In the bin, because I'm tired. Leave Grace alone. Leave her alone. You're so annoying. Imagine being upset with somebody because You've been there, you played with them, and then they're dating people that aren't like you, and are you bothered? Okay, Joey, make it make sense. Sean says Josh and Matilda, I mean, jo sorry, Sean and Matilda say Josh and Mimi again, and he was like, oh, everybody needs to be tested. Everybody needs to be tested. Does everybody, need first of all, they've been in a couple for like a week and a half. What do you mean everybody needs to be tested? Which means everybody, again, not everyone's gonna be like you, Sean, as kissing up Diamante and Ruby while you got Matilda. And then even in the challenge, yesterday you were kissing Lola. But you talk about someone being a game player and stuff like that. Boy, bye. Again, you just consistently want to bring up Mimi and Josh. Rest. Find something new to talk about. The next one. Whose head is likely to turn? Um, then here comes Joey. Oh, I know something that nobody else knows. I know something that so nobody else knows. People were picking Grace and Harry, Ruben and Lola. Um, again, Ruby and Lola... Ruben and Lola have no reason to be upset. You're a new couple. Of course, your head's going to turn like death. Anyways, and then um, Joey and Jesse picked Josh and Mimi. And then Joey disclosed that he was on a secret mission. And that that's the reason why he feels like someone's head's going to turn. Because of the outcome or the mission or the objective of this secret mission. So everyone's like, what's the secret mission? What's the secret mission? And he was like, well, it's a secret mission, so I can't tell you. Like, Joey's, um, dumb persona, I'm not gonna lie, guys, for, as a grown, as a grown 33-year-old man, if this is the only way you think you can make money, I'm not gonna lie, this is shameful, I'm not even gonna lie, I think it gets to a point, like, when you're in your early 20s, even late, mid, mid 20s, even late 20s, you know what I mean, maybe, but wouldn't you have evolved of this? Like, Mark Wright, even though Joey Essex was big on Tabby, Mark Wright, another person on The Only Way is Essex, I would arguably say bigger than Joey Essex was. He definitely gave us more character, more content, more everything. Um, he's even given growth. I can't remember who he's in. I think he's married to Michelle Keegan. They got kids. He's a family man. He managed, like, guys, there's so many men that go on these shows that act a fool. They be cheating, embarrassing themselves, everything, and they grow up. Arj from the same show. He's losing weight, he's doing well for himself. Even another show, um, Jamie Lang from the only, um, from, from Made in Chelsea, he's married. Um, Spencer, he's married. Now, he might be cheating allegedly, I don't know, but he, he's married. Hugo, he's married. Proudlock, he's married. All these men, them are married, like, are doing something other than what they were doing back in the day. So, but Joey thinking that like, at your big age, you're still doing up the same, you're literally like a one trick pony. Like, ain't you tired, ho? Like, you, this is this is tired. This is so, so tired. And then Mimi thankfully outs herself and says, oh, well, I um, asked Joey to basically go grab Aya so we can have a, pri a private conversation to shut it down. And then Josh was like, oh, without my knowledge. But they weren't really able to get into that conversation properly because there was so much going on with Joey like, making stupid jokes, like just being annoying. And yeah, so they didn't really, they weren't really able to flesh that out properly. But ultimately I do agree with Mimi. She did, well, she was silly for it, but she, you know, she trusted Joey and she went to him in confidence. And this is how he played her, <laughs> to breach that type of confidence. But I'll be, and he is a snake for that, but I'll be so serious, Mimi, if I'm gonna keep it 1,000, you're saying you're not sneaky. You definitely were sneaky because, girl, you were on your knees, yeah? You were on your knees to the point you didn't want anyone to see that the door had opened and closed, yeah? You were sitting on the floor. Well, first you were on your knees, then you were sitting on the floor. 
so you didn't want people to see you. That's sneaking around by definition. We're not even going to argue. By definition, I was sneaking around. Then, um, I think Matilda and Sean picked Harry and Grace, and then Matilda was like, well, you're not Grace's type. And he was like, oh, how would you know? Because you're not this. I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say it too many times. I'm not. Anyway, so the game was over, everyone was stressed out, everyone was like, oh my gosh, what, what is going on, what has happened, what is this secret mission? And Ayo reveals to Kieran that he did not tell Jessica about the conversation, which is a rookie error, he been should have told her. Ben should have told her because, like, even if it didn't come out on the show, it was going to come out on TV, like, this is crazy. Like, especially, you know, I'll get to it in a second. Mimi and Joey have a conversation and Mimi is, I think Mimi's definitely very justified in being upset. If you're my friend and you breach my trust, you did me dirty. Even if it's something that I did that was wrong, unless you're going to check me about it at the time, don't assist me with it and then now air me out. However, Mimi's saying that it was basically a closure conversation. Guys, respectfully, it was BS. That was not a closure conversation. You wanted to have a conversation with Ayo to basically see where his head at. It was to see if you guys could circle back again. That wasn't to shut it down. That was not a shut it down conversation at all. It was literally earlier on in the day. So early on, not early on, maybe the, the night beforehand, she was speaking to Nicole on the terrace, crying about how Josh treats her like a princess and Ayo is just so simple. Again, Sean knows that you liked him. Matilda knows these are all things that were happening in recent days. Within less than 24 hours before you wanted to have that conversation with him. So that conversation was never going to be about what you tried to say it was about. But you know what? It is what it is. Joey said that she was sat there seductively. That boy's that boy actually stupid. I swear, he's actually stupid. But him saying that he's Mimi's friend, you're not her friend. Because you threw her underneath the bus. He tried to make it seem like it was brought up naturally. In it and he just had to reveal it. No, you brought it up. You brought it up. And Joby, why would he ever take accountability? He never does. So anyways, they end up laughing it off and they're cool now. Jessica and I have a conversation and she's like, why didn't you tell me? And I agree, why didn't you tell her? The reason why I say that is because if you and Jessica had a conversation, not just a couple of days ago, that you omitted mentioning that you had a conversation with Mimi, why would you now not think when the next occurrence happened and you're saying you understood where Jessica was coming from, you would have changed your behavior and fill her in when she said she wanted to be filled in. So the fact that he didn't do that, I think was wrong. And I think he was ignorant of him to do that. Even though that's what I'm saying, I'm not giving Ayo too many props because he's gonna fall down when he needs to fall down. And he fell down there. Now he does tell her the story. And I think he sounded like he gave, he gave like a good synopsis of it. But I agree with Jessica. Now she's in a challenge where Joby's trying to spray her with tea and she's blindsided and she should never be in a position where she has to be blindsided about something. You know what I mean? You should have already plugged her in so she could have defended herself. Now, I'm like, don't know that she needs to defend herself against Joby, but you know, just because she likes to talk. So I think he should have told her and he was definitely dead ass wrong for that. So, you know, I mean, there should be no excuses. It's just, I'm sorry. And I won't do it again. And in future, if something comes up, so he's like, oh, trust me, trust me. I, oh, we can't, I'm not going to lie. Your judgment is not great, baby. I'll be so serious. You, you've done well in a couple of days, but I don't do it. Do we want trust one judgment. Oh, I, I made it like I took a calculated risk and I really formulated and thought this is not worth telling you. Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't think you have the qualifications to make that judgment on your own. So then we see Mimi and Josh have a conversation and she gives him a quick synopsis of the whole secret mission as well. And she was like, oh yeah, the way Joey's making it seem like I was going to do a madness and that wasn't true. Mimi, if, if Ayo would have bit, you would have done that madness. And the fact that she was saying that, oh, uh, the conversation we had was on the daybed anyway. So, you know what I mean? And it was the exact same conversation I wanted to have on the terrace. That's not true. That's not true because there's no need for you guys to be secretive if we're going to have a PC conversation like we've been having, your, your issue is not like people were looking at you because realistically speaking, if you're worried about people looking at you, why did you guys have it on the day beds in the first place? I mean, like, well, after he said he wasn't going to go to the terrace, if that was such a big concern between the two of you guys. But also the reason the terrace conversation would have objectively been different because you guys don't have the eyes. So it's not like you guys are going to decide to like get together in front of everybody. That's crazy behavior. So yeah, and also I all led the conversation and said, yeah, this thing that you that you thinking is put to the side is not happening. So if maybe Mimi led the conversation, maybe she would have said something different. But luckily for her, I all led the conversation, so she didn't have to really declare her love for him or whatever she wanted to do, and then him reject her in that way. Now he still rejected her, but it would have been worse. I all and not I on Josh. Josh and Joey end up having a conversation and 
He wants to know the story from Joey, since Joey's the one who said, I'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information. He wants to know what bad boy inf piece of information are you referring to? But Joey now all of a sudden wants to be fake loyal, saying, now, like, oh, you need to speak to Mimi. Oh, um, you know what I mean? If she's your girl, then you can speak to her. And, oh, I'm being loyal to her. And da, 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 da. But I agree with Josh. You drew her out in front of everybody. You wanted to put her business out on front street. And now that someone's inquiring about this business, now you don't want to say anything. And then he was like, oh, well, you drew me out. What's has that got to do if josh said that um you're an antagonist um oh sorry you that's, that's what he said but you're, you antagonize people what has that got to do with you drawing out mimi what's that well, that's, like as if it crosses itself out as if, like, the only reason why i said that is because no you did it because you're messy yeah you're messy 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 and he was like oh well he's private how could he be private when you exposed it like, you're the only one that brought it up, so I don't understand what you're doing. Like, you tried to come for him, and he's now coming to you as a man to try to figure things out. Since you put his business out on Front Street, made him look crazy, and he's trying to figure it out. Man to man, I'm not going to lie, I agree with Josh. Again, if you feel like you're sitting on a bad boy piece of information, and you're making it seem that there's something that I need to know, that I don't know, then come and tell me now. Come and tell me. But, again, speaking to Joby is so dumb because... He's dumb, and then the conversation was so circular. So we didn't get her tomorrow night, but tomorrow night is probably going to be the Grafties. It's a Friday. It's going to go down. Um, I'm not going to lie. I already, I, I voted. I already feel sorry for Mimi. I'm not going to lie. Um, even though it is what it is, I do feel, um, I do feel sorry for her in advance because she's definitely going to get drawn out. And Josh, that's the thing. Is the difference is, um, like Jesse ain't going to do nothing to Joey when she sees him flirting with Lola, or Josh is. You see what I'm saying? Josh, Josh is. He's gonna ha he's gonna have to do his big one because there's pride in it, and not even in a negative way, but there is pride in it. I don't want to be looking stupid, and I know he doesn't either. So it's gonna be difficult. Like so, there's gonna be oh, even like get a full story for Jessica because she's definitely gonna get the one that's um the one sided couple. Yeah, she's gonna get that one, and again, it's gonna make her feel like. And then you know, Mimi and I are gonna get the unfinished business. So it's like. People are going to be thinking, oh my gosh, the public thing that I or Mimi have unfinished business. And if they think Jessica, the relationship with Jessica is one-sided, then Mimi and I... Guys, this storyline is never going to end. I actually want to scream. But I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. There's going to be drama. Um, so we're going to see. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.